back to another video. I've I've called you guys be breadwinners. I've had what I've said what's up everybody. But today as I was getting this little slideshow together for you guys, I was like, you know what? They kind of feel like my family. What's up fam? What do you guys think about me addressing each video? What's up family? In this video, I'm sharing, you guys know that I've, I've struggled with anxiety more in the past um, 30, 40, 90 days than in my entire life. A little background, my parents got a divorce after being married for 40 years and I started to get anxiety and I saw a psychiatrist that gave me some medicine last December and I just didn't feel any different or better. And so she suggested that I see a therapist to talk about my parents' divorce because I just never really thought they would get divorced after being married for 40 years. So I started going to therapy and that made all my anxiety go away. And then um, I also started pursuing Amazon KDP and I made a bunch of money and then it went away <laughs> when my account was suspended. You guys are probably like, please stop talking about your account being suspended. Part of me was never going to talk about it, but then I'm such an authentic person that I was like, I owe it to myself. It's part of my story. It's part of my journey of going up the mountain. And so now that I've, I'm going up the mountain, you know, of like building multiple passive income streams, I've always had my email list and I've learned different ad platforms and I'm going to talk about those in future videos. But the thing that I was struggling with is like, where is this feeling coming from and how come I can't manage it like I have previously? And I think it's because I'm coming upon new areas of growth. And so the growth is demanding me to feel more things because we have to have opposition in all things to grow. And so uh, the risk, you know, the risk and reward is also a part of this. So anyway, so I wanted to share with you, I haven't really talked about this for April, even though you guys saw that I published every day on YouTube in April. I didn't really talk about this. So I wanted to record it because I'm all about going on the journey and documenting the journey. So I, when I had this anxiety, I was like, I definitely want to feel better. So I was like, well, let's go to audiobooks and see if I can't figure out what's struggling inside of me. And for the most part, you guys know that I hit 11K in royalties in January and then it stopped and I had to start over. So some of my anxiety is around money, which is interesting because I've had income before KDP. So I needed to figure out like, what is this coming from? So that's what this video is kind of about, about what I decided to do for the month of April. And let's dive in. I want to tell you about the audiobooks that I've been pursuing because I'm always trying to get better. And I think mindset is a big part of that. So the first book that I decided to read or listen to was Think, Think and Grow Rich. And you guys will see that I did about five audiobooks. And the only reason I was able to do that is because now that I don't have a huge passive income coming in, like around 11K, I can't hire out things to be done on our rental. I have to do the stuff with my husband. And my husband works still, okay? So, and I'm a digital marketer. So, I have things to do too. So I have been prepping and painting like crazy. Um, if I were to turn the camera on, you would see paint all over my face. I almost did that, but I'm saving you guys a little bit of, um, you know, scariness. Um, unless you like painted faces, maybe the next time I'll <laughs> do a painted face. So I've been listening to a lot of stuff as I've been prepping and painting, priming and all that stuff. I just got done painting priming ceilings and that's backbreaking. So anyways, so the first one was Think and Grow Rich and I I spent a long time never really going after this book and I had always heard good quotes from it, but I had never really taken the time to hear it. And if you guys know Napoleon Hill Foundation actually was bought by Russell Brunson a couple months ago. And he is a really incredible digital marketer that I follow. So the basis of Think and Grow Rich is that it, you know, this was created a long time ago. This was created in like 1930. And it's all about allowing yourself to 
have ideas that can grow your life and change your life. And it's kind of long, but it's, it's good. And if you want breakdown videos, more of each audiobook, like a book report of my favorite points or frameworks, then definitely let me know. So that was the first one. And then once I got done with that, I knew that I had to do Napoleon's Hill's most recent book that was published 70 years after he wrote it. And um, I don't think it was 70 years after he wrote it. Maybe it was, it was, he got done in like the 70, he passed away 40 years ago. Okay. And it just got released like 10 years ago. And uh, I have it twice here. It's Outwitting the Devil, okay? But before I go to Outwitting the Devil, I listened to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which was all about the difference between liabilities and assets in your life. And if you own a house, it is a liability if you live in the house. And if you have a house that you rent out, it now is an asset because it makes you money. So a lot of people live their life when they buy a house and they have a mortgage, they think that it's an asset, but it's not because it's not bringing in money. So this was good for me just, you know, as I'm painting and getting our rental ready, we might actually have to sell our rental if the cash flow number doesn't work. And I never expected that. And it's all, you know, when I was working on this and, and we were figuring out the numbers, like, I thought that if I was making repeatedly 11K months just from Amazon KDP, we could make it all work. And it's totally changed since then. So I think that also added to the anxiety, but Rich Dad, Poor Dad really reminded me of the real estate avenue. And even though I love real estate, you guys, I still love coaching people and building an email list the most. And my husband appreciates that but his mindset is really on building long-term assets like rental properties, okay? So it, I kind of feel like maybe I should do a full video on our real estate and our journey. I talked about that a little bit, but for you to understand how to leverage that for yourself, I really think it can go so many different ways, okay? So knowing the difference between an asset and a liability. And then I went into Outwitting the Devil. This was a book, this is a fictional book that Napoleon Hill wrote where he felt like he was interviewing Satan. And the, the, so it is nonfiction, but it's also a story about how if Satan can allow us to think that he doesn't exist, he's one. And if we can just not think for ourselves and have new ideas, then the devil has won. So I actually really like this because it aligned with me spiritually and religiously with um, the principles that I live now. But also it was a good reminder because sometimes I have prideful faith where I'm like, oh yeah, Satan ain't got nothing on me. When really like, hello, I've spent the past 90 days like in lots of anxiety and that could be a form where I'm not exercising as much faith and taking action to get away from that feeling. So I really, really loved this book and um, I thought I thought it was good. So then the book that I read probably before this was Be Your Future Self and this is by Benjamin Hardy and he's like 34 years old. He just got a doctorate in like human behavior and I want everybody within the sound of my voice to read this book. Because he talks about if you can imagine your future self, that changes the decisions that you make today and not waiting to do something later. And I thought a lot about how I've been fasting. I'm on day 211 of fasting at least 16, 20 or more hours to lose body fat. And it's just made me feel better. But there are some times where I want to binge or I want to eat food that's not good for me. And the thing that has stopped me is thinking about my future self, like who I want to become and who I want to get back to. And I think it helps that I have lived in a fairly healthy life and I've been athletic. I've played soccer in college, so I know what to get back to. And I think that helps me fuel my future self, too. So I had started um, Play Bigger many, 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 like three years ago, and I decided I need to finish it. 
And this was perfect for me because this book talks about how to create new categories. So like Netflix did that when they came out with online streaming where you could order stuff and it would come to your house. And Blockbuster actually had the opportunity to buy Netflix and they laughed in their face. Look who's laughing now. Also the opportunity to adopt Uber. There were lots of taxi companies that could have done that. So there are companies that have created brand new categories with chat GPT, a brand new category is being dominated and we're not even calling it AI, right? I just called it Ch chat GPT because they were the loudest to the market. So this book is about owning a category with a software or something that you do and this book actually helped me develop my next coaching program for solopreneurs and coaches to create something on Amazon from their coaching business. And in the book, Play Bigger, the authors talk about ways to strike in the marketplace and they call it their lightning strike. And one of them is releasing a book. And I thought that was really cool because when I released a book last year, the authenticity book, even though it hasn't been the majority of my sales, it has opened the door for me as a digital marketer with other people. And if you guys want a separate video on that, like building your personal brand with a book, let me know. Okay. So play bigger. Definitely. Like I always enjoyed the book, but it was time to finish it. So I finished it. And that's kind of what I did for April. Uh, yesterday or this morning, all the days are blending into one because I've been painting, but I started The Power of One More by Ed Milet, and I actually got to hear him speak in September and it was so powerful. I laughed and I cried and I cheered and he's just so good. He just talks about compounding your decisions by doing one more. And he also is very muscular. So he relates a lot to like building muscle, but also he didn't have the greatest upbringing. He was raised by a dad that was an alcoholic and he talks about having to manage his father as a child. And there's just a lot of really good tips in this book about figuring out your one more and how it works for you in your life. And there's um, three things that I think he said, I think I wrote it down, but he talks about your one more can be um, based off of three things. And he said they are uh, who you surround yourself with. So association and then your intention and your faith. And he put it in order of faith, intention, association. And I'm not quite done with this. I'm more than halfway done and it's so good. I'll probably finish it on Monday because I try to take a break on Sundays from working on the rental and everything. Um, he also says that time management is actually life management. And I thought that was so cool that there's just a lot of times we don't do what we wanna do in life because we don't make time for it, but there is time to do it. And then he said, maxing out is maxing up. And I thought that was cute. So anyways, those are that's where I've been. And these, I think everyone needs to invest and consume things that uplift them because it, it does help my emotions and it helps my thoughts turn into better action. So let me know what you guys are reading or what you're listening to. And I can definitely give more referrals or book reviews on other mindset or money books that I've read. Love you guys. Peace out.